I'm taking the Cooper's Hawk um, out of the cage. And I have his feet secured because this is what's really gonna hurt you if he gets me. And then I like to keep his face covered just to keep him as low stress as possible. And then this is a tail guard to protect his tail feathers because they will um, rub on the ground of the cage as they're in there. Uh, so just to make sure they're not damaged and he can still use them when he, when he flies. So I'm gonna try to get his head without getting bit because we're gonna do a lead test. So he ran into a hospital building and that may be because uh, he wasn't paying attention to what he was doing because he was chasing food or it was because um, he can maybe have lead poisoning and that makes them lethargic in flight. So we're taking it from the jugular and we're going to run a lead test to determine if he has lead or not. I mean, he could very well just be head trauma from not paying attention to where he's flying. This is a juvenile duck that came in. We think it might have gotten attacked by a hawk. Um, it has a neck injury which was stitched up. We thought originally it was a ruddy duck, but now we are thinking it's a ring neck duck. Um, but juvenile ducks are often hard to identify at this age. Jonah is going to help me clean his neck wound. So we're just very gently keeping the suture site clean. And it's healing really well, mm -hmm. so he's doing quite well. And hopefully we'll be out of here very soon. I think this thing is pretty good. This baby bird is breathing a little heavy, so I'm just going to check him out. He has really poor feather quality. Everything's all right. It's very skinny. Oh, no. He is breathing a little bit heavy, and I can hear a slight clicking sound. Um, that could be an indication of um, respiratory infection. So I think it's best to put him on some kind of meds, uh, antibiotics, and see how it goes. We're trying to strengthen her legs because she came in unable to use her legs at all. She had a little bit of lead poisoning, but not enough to really cause any problems with her legs. But now she's starting to stand on her own, and she actually has some force. But we have to do this every day, a couple of times a day is the best. And today, for the first time, I saw her stand up and flap her wings, which I was very happy to see. Good girl. Keep pushing those legs. How long is it going to take to... It could be weeks, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. And in that time, she can get a keel sore because she's laying down so much of the time. And so we want her to make great strides of using those legs. Good girl. So she's standing on her own. He's a great black-backed gull, and he likes to keep them company. And they're good with him. So we have to be very quiet with these guys. He's getting Medicam, which actually kind of has a sweet flavor, so they don't mind it too much. And we just put it in the bottom of their bill and let them like swallow it naturally. We identify them. They each have different colored tags that we use to identify who they are. So it's Lucy. And now that they're all out, I can just um, refresh some of their cage a little bit. We make sure to give them more earthworms in the evening. 
and they have those long beaks with like a um, sort of a point at the end and they use those beaks to stick into the dirt and find worms inside. We've tried to, you know, mimic a kind of natural setting for them with dirt and leaves and it's nice and quiet. And woodcocks are definitely a prey species, so their inclination when they're scared is to jump up and down and make sort of erratic movements. And that's why we keep everything really soft in here so that they don't hurt themselves. And we tell people if they find a woodcock, like not to put it into a hard carrier, but something very soft, like a bag, so that they don't injure themselves. It's okay, sweetie. Come back to your buddies. Yeah. He's basically got has like a bow in the shoulder that's broken, but it can heal on his own. Feel the wings and see if there's any other fracture. And we'll weigh him to see how much he weighs. Weighs 74 grams. Um, it's fairly common for like window stripers to have uh, shoulder fractures or head trauma. So this is like a fairly common injury and most heal pretty well. So, and then every patient in the hospital gets a leg tag. Just in case we get another red belly woodpecker, you never know. Now he has a little identifying leg tag that has the first uh, three letters of his rescuer's name, Dina in this case, and now he's identifiable. It's very cute. This is Prince. He's a fancy pigeon, so um, he will be eventually adopted. The two you caught, James. They were together. They were together. <laughs> Asadi came in with both legs paralyzed and now is getting ready to be released very soon. So it's a great success story.